Hello, and welcome to our virtual worship for the benefits this weekend. I'm down here in the churchyard at St Mary's, as you can see, so that I can show you how the scaffolding is going up on the tower and the spire behind me. We hope that very soon the actual work on the repairs will begin. In the meantime, it gives me an opportunity to say once again, many thanks, sincere and grateful thanks to all those of you who've contributed to our inspired appeal. It was only with your help that we've been able to raise the money to make these works possible. And they will ensure that our spire remains in place and safe and as a witness to God's presence in this community for many hundreds of years to come. Let's begin our worship together today then with the collect for this week. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, the parable of the bags of gold. Jesus said, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gathered five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold came also. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Yes. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Parable of the Talents, the Gospel reading set for this Sunday, is actually amongst the most abused texts in the New Testament. Contrary to what might be modelled by some best-selling American evangelists, the Gospel does not condone a drive to economic prosperity. This isn't helped by the NIV and the very poor translation of the word talent in Greek as bags of gold. You really can't imagine Jesus even setting foot on that particular road. Instead, it challenges us to use all our God-given talents, stroke gifts, for the sake of the kingdom, no matter how many we have, or we think we have. The parable is set in Jesus' discourse called eschatological, where he instructs his disciples to endure through difficult times, but to live in anticipation of the Lord's return. We call this return the parousia in Greek, and of course it appears in the creeds. And as in all the parables in Matthew 24 and 25, it exemplifies the certainty of the Lord's coming and how the disciples are to live in the meantime, but always being ready for the Lord's return. The parable of the talents encourages the right use of all God has given to us until the time of Jesus' return in judgment. The parable of the faithful and wise slave, the parable of the ten maidens, have all the same sort of flavour regarding Jesus' imminent return. And it's interesting that in the Lucan version of today's parable of the talents, ten slaves receive a small amount each, the same amount each too, to do the master's business. But here in Matthew, in the redacted text, there are only three servants, who are given each to his ability, verse 15. Although in monetary terms, the amounts given to each are increasingly huge. Now, if we can condone the use of their talents by the first two slaves, 
The parable suggests the third is being punished for being protective of his mediocrity. I must admit, I do feel a little sorry for the punished slave, especially as, as part of his punishment, what he had in the first place is, even that's taken away and given to the one who had most. I know from my own experience that those of us who feel we have so little to offer don't want to risk being exposed as seemingly meagre compared with others around who seem to have much more in the talent stakes and those who have the confidence to use them and show them off in the best sense possible, of course. When I was a monk, the superior of the community dipped out of singing the offices or singing the mass when I was presenter there, and for quite a while too. Over tea, one day, I asked him why this was. He was very gently and kindly said that he had enough to do in his top role. But I replied, I said, well, that the following Saturday Evensong there were to be a lot of guests visiting the community and as at that moment there was very unusually only me to sing. And he very reluctantly agreed to join me. Well at Evensong when he opened his mouth and I heard him for the first time by the end of the psalm I wondered why I bothered to sing at all. His singing was absolutely beautiful, perfect for plain song. And it's a bit of a curious twist then to the parable, isn't it? In that he didn't want to put others off trying to sing, as by comparison, by using his talent, he was so much better at it than they were. But the exception still proves the rule. We are each called to use the talents we have. The amount we have, or perceive we have, is totally unimportant. We are called to use them, or is it it, faithfully, in this time of the Church, as we await whatever we consider the Perusia to be. Amen.
So let us pray. That this day may be holy, good and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may offer to you our worship and our work. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord. That in the pleasures and pains of life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit, in communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now our final blessing. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Do have a good week. <laughs>